whoa. This is much harder than it looked. Ah! No. So difficult. Definitely need to make sure that your bum isn't beginning so much. <laughs> Meet 19-year-old Khadija Mella and her horse, Rex. She's the first British Muslim woman to win a horse race. Khadija is a teenage jockey extraordinaire. She'd only been training for three months when she won her first race. Khadija, how did you manage to win such a big race with so little time to prepare? I'm riding maybe three horses every morning. Really? Uh, yeah. Now, it's not all about the horse, is it? No. Having a fast horse helps. However, having the skill to communicate with your horse where to go and how to move is what gets you to win. How does anyone learn to do this? I'm just going to show you. Mm. Khadija's brought Zahn to the Rider Performance Lab at Hartbury University and College in Gloucestershire, the most advanced horse study centre in the world. In the past, it was difficult to study jockeys because they're on top of horses moving extremely quickly. But that is all beginning to change with the introduction of simulators like this one. It's the only one of its kind in the country and we get to ride it. How excited are you to be doing this? I'm really excited to get some feedback and learn what I need to improve. Jockey coach George Baker is here to explain all. George, what are we using the simulator for? We'll be able to see how her weight is used and not hindering the horse going forward. Cameras are tracking Khadija's movement, and if her weight isn't balanced across the horse, the area will light up on the screen. How long can she hold this monkey crouched position? Most people could only manage about 30 seconds because our thigh muscles would be burning. If you look at Khadija, she's almost still, so her quads are absorbing all the shocks, keeping that position really, really rigid. But just how do jockeys like Khadija stay in this position for so long? Your muscles are made up of fibres. You have fast twitch fibres, which use energy in sudden bursts over a short space of time, and slow twitch fibres, like the ones in Khadija's thigh muscles, which use energy more slowly so that she's able to hold the monkey crouch position over a long period of time. Khadija's amazing thigh muscles meant she could hold the monkey crouch for one minute and 30 seconds. Well, I'm going to do my best to match it. It's more wobbly than I thought it would be, actually. I want you to sit as high as possible. Like that. Your legs. Stick your bum out a little bit. Whoa, whoa, whoa! This is much harder than it looked! Ah! No, so difficult. Definitely need to make sure that your bum isn't beginning so much. My legs basically feel like they're on fire. <laughs> I think I'm done. <laughs> ah, ah, <laughs> Next is Winner, and he's having problems with his nose. What's up, fella? When I sleep, my nose makes, like, snoring noises. Does this disturb anyone at home? It disturbs my brother, and he gets crossed. My brother snoring also disturbs me when we used to share a room. Oi! So now, what do you think might be causing these noises? So there might be something going on in his nose that's blocking his nose that's causing his snoring. So what's the plan, Mr Sharma? This is something called a flexible nasendoscope. So it's a little camera that we use that goes through the nose that allows me to see if there's something blocking your nose. So we're just looking in. That big pink thing is something called a turbiner, which is like a little filter in your nose. You can see how it's quite big. We're at the back of the nose now. Can you see that pinky thing at the back, yeah, winner? That's your adenoids. Adenoids are small lumps of tissue at the back of the nose, and they're part of the immune system. So they're quite big in you, so that's probably what's causing a bit of a problem with your nose. Well done. So what are the treatment options for Winner? We can give Winner some medicines that can help to reduce the swelling of those turbinates. And the adenoids themselves, we can actually do an operation where we can take those out and then you can breathe a bit better at night time. Thanks very much. The last patient waiting to see Mr Sharma today is Macy, and she's got a problem with her throat. Sometimes I sing and it kind of hits my throat, and when it's in the summer, I have hay fever, and my voice sounds a little bit weird. So what we're going to do is we're going to travel a little bit further down this little nose here. 
Mr. Sharma is taking a look at Macy's throat using an endoscope camera again, which has been turned around. We're now looking down Macy's throat and you can see her epiglottis. That's the bit of tissue that stops food going into your windpipe. Macy, how does it feel? It's a little bit weird, but I think I can handle it. OK, you're doing really well, Macy. Just say la, 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 la. La, 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 la. And an E. E. Perfect, there we go. You just the little vocal cords moving in and out there. Are those the vocal cords right there, Pepsi? Those are, yeah. Those Incredible. Are moving in and out, Incredible. Yeah. So, Sunil, can you tell why a blocked nose because of hay fever would cause a sore throat? What may be happening is when you get a blocked nose, do you find you have to breathe through your mouth? Yes. Yeah. In the nose, you've got all these filters, whereas in the mouth, you don't have any of those. So the air is just going straight into your throat. So it tends to dry your throat a bit. We can try and help give you some medication that helps to unblock your nose. And then hopefully you won't get that dry air coming into your throat. Now Macy is going to be able to sing even better. Take it away, Macy. La 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 dee. <laughs> As your ears, nose and throat are all connected, it's incredible to see how today's ENT medical hero can fix one of these body parts by looking at the other. Meet professional street dancer Kieran Lai. He's been in films, won loads of titles at the British and World Dance Championships, and recently wowed the judges on The Greatest Dancer with a type of dancing called popping. What was your inspiration? From YouTube. Like, really? I learned how to dance for a year off of YouTube. By yourself? By myself. Just yes. learning how to do just one small pop or a little tight wow. move. If we slow Kieran right down, you can see he's tensing parts of his body very quickly, forcing them outwards, and this tensing and relaxing of his muscles to make his body jerk is called popping. But there's much more to these moves than you can see here. To get the low down on Kieran's body, I'm placing EMG or electromyography sensors on Kieran's muscles to see how fast they're moving when he pops. Ronx will also wear sensors, so you'll be able to compare the speed of her muscle movements to Kieran's. Conducting the experiment today is Irene DiGiulio. Did you see the arm pop? Watch again. So how long did it take Kieran's muscles to contract? When the muscles are active, the signal increases, which is shown on the graph. These allow us to measure the speed his muscles are working. That actual contraction of one of his muscles was just 0.33. That's a third of a second. That's super fast. My wavelength seems to be a bit wider. It took half a second for my muscles to contract and relax. Quick, but not as quick as Kieran's. Kieran's, yours you know was what? a third. I think it's just because I'm a good teacher. <laughs> You've definitely surprised me, though. You should be proud. I've just got to get that pop in. Got to pop more at I mean, home. You're becoming I? more like a machine now. Yeah. With the sensors on. <laughs> Dancers like Kieran have pushed their bodies to the limit and developed superb muscle memory and agility to move super fast. To get such a brilliant body, it takes lots and lots of practice. Zand, meet Vera the chameleon. Hello, Vera. Now, Chameleon's eyes are amazing. So Vera can look 360 degrees in every direction, and she can move her eyes independently so she can look at Zand and at me at the same time. Whereas humans, we always move our eyes almost always in the same direction. Your eye movements are amazing too. What would be absolutely brilliant is if somebody could be bothered to invent a machine that was a kind of incredible eye tracker so that we could actually see our eye movements. What about this? Whoa! Look at that, Chris! Well, that's amazing. On the bottom of the computer screen is a bar containing infrared light emitters and infrared cameras. And they are able to very accurately detect where on the screen my eyes are looking. Wow, look at that. So you can see his eyeballs there constantly moving, just like yours. All these moves are thanks to your extra ocular eye muscles. But how many times a day do you move your eyes? Is it A, a thousand times, B, ten thousand times, or C, a hundred thousand times? Well, the answer is C. Your eyes move 
about 100,000 times a day. Which gives me a brilliant idea. I thought we could use the equipment to create a bit of art. What kind of art? Oil painting? No, but join the dots painting. Here we go. So what you see on the computer is Chris's eyes darting around between each dot. But only once he's finished will we see if he's managed to join the dots correctly. I've done. I've looked at every dot. Chris, are you ready for the big reveal? Yes, I am. Here we go. Ta-da! Ooh, I'm pleased with that. It's Grumbles. Each dot here is a time that Chris's eyeballs paused for a fraction of a second to take the information in. The bigger the dot, the longer the pause. And we call those fixations. So to draw the picture of Mr. G, Chris's eyes paused 300 times to get all the dots registered in his brain. And he did that successfully by using his extraocular muscles. I wonder where we've ended up. Here, give me the earpiece. I'll pop my head out and go and have a look. Hold on. I don't think we've gone anywhere, Zandi. It's just a completely normal street. I tell you what, then, you can get out there and have a look for our recycling bin. <laughs> the street may look normal, Chris, but you absolutely don't. I must say, it's awfully hot. It's no wonder wearing that weird tinfoil hoodie. And anyway, stop complaining, Chris, and start knocking on doors. You've got to find our food bin. OK, I'll start with this one. Oh, good afternoon. I seem to be scanning. Please wait. Hello and welcome, Dr. Chris. I am Pepper. Please come in. Thank you very much. Chris, what's going on? I don't know, Zan. A robot answered the door and there are no people here. We'll see if they've got our bin. Hello, I am Kirobot. Please take a seat. Thank you. Um, actually, I was just wondering if you'd seen our food recently. I've detected an increase in your body temperature. You need a drink of water. Well, I'm a bit thirsty. Fetch, please bring a cup of water and more, Dr. Chris. Who's Fetch? I think this might be Fetch. There's something a bit odd about this place, but I can't put my finger on what it is. Hmm. I know what you mean, Chris. Thank you, Fetch. Well, drink up. You don't want to be a rude house guest. Hmm. <sighs> Why is it so hot everywhere? Is there a heat wave or something? It is 45 degrees Celsius. Typical weather for summer 2054. Wait, what? Did you say 2054? Chris, the time machine must have whizzed into the future. Zand, this changes everything that we think about space and time and quantum gravity. Yeah, yeah, Chris. Have a look on the table. Oh, yeah. What are they? Whoa, these are smart glasses. They must be what everyone wears. They're amazing. I can see my location, the weather, news headlines, and... Me! Ah! I've managed to patch myself through to your smart visor so you can see me all the time! Isn't this great, Chris? Yes, but unfortunately, Zand, I can't see anything else. OK, I'll go. Bye! Bye! I see you have an apple core there. Would you like me to dispose of it for you? Yes, I would. Thank you very much. Actually, that's why I'm here. I'm looking for our food recycling bin. Have you seen it? I think what's happened is it's got muddled up with everyone else's in the street. Well, it seems like Fetch has not seen my recycling bin. What's that? Hello, who's this little cutie? Hello, who are you? This is Vera. He is the household pet. Would you like to stroke him? Yes, I would. Hello. You're very cute, but I can't decide if you're a dog or a donkey. Well, maybe he's both, Chris. What would you call that? Donog? Dog key. Well, whatever you are, you are lovely. Here, I'll put you down again. Oh, well, I really must be going, but thank you, Miro, to you and all your friends for having me. 
Before you go, would you like to dance, Chris? Oh, yes, please! Um, well, dancing's not really my specialty, Pepper. Well, it is mine. Come on, Chris, lighten up. Dancing makes you feel good. <laughs> This is brilliant fun! Yes, you're right. But I think we need to get back to 2024. Pepper, I've got to get back to my own time. Bye! Bye, Dr Chris. Bye, everyone. Thanks! Bye! Ah. It's the food recycling bin. Zan, I've got it. Great! Bring it with you. Ah. Brilliant work, Chris. Now sit down and hold on because we are going. Oh, I should have brought a glove box back with you, Chris. <laughs>